So section 3.2 is on parallel lines and transversals. Everybody's got some notes and paper out to take some notes? Parallel lines and transversals. So section 3.1, we talked about lines being cut by a transversal. Now we're going to learn a special relationship that lines and parallel lines have when they're cut by transversals. We talked about corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and consecutive interior angles, and they will have a special relationship. So your foldable that you have, the, the blue one, had those middle boxes that you were to fill out for today. And those things that we were discussing are things like corresponding angles, alternate interior, alternate exterior, and consecutive inter interior angles. There are four theorems that you ended up putting in the middle of those boxes. Those theorems are based on the fact that we have a conditional statement. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, is our hypothesis, then the corresponding angles are congruent, is the conclusion. So if we have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal, corresponding will be congruent. Yes? So those go in the middle, exactly. Okay? Those should be your middle notes. Likewise, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are also going to be congruent. And remind me, what does congruent mean? The same. They have equal measures. Good. The third one, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate exterior angles are also going to be congruent. Okay? But here's the one that's different. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then consecutive interior angles are going to be supplementary. Remind me what supplementary means. Yep, they add up to 180. Okay, so we have four examples here. Inside of your blue foldable, we're going to work those examples. Okay, that's why you want to have it out. So this first one, tell me, what equation are we going to write down to make, to use this theorem? Good. 2x, smart ink's not working for some reason, as always. <laughs> Hopefully that will work now. Oh, silly thing. So, Lauren said that 2x minus 3 will be equal to 65. Does everyone agree? Okay. And that's because these are corresponding angles. They're on the same side, same position. That makes them congruent, simply because the lines are parallel. Okay? So when we work this out, what's the next step? Add 3. The hardest part's done. We found the uh, relationship and we wrote the equation. Now it's just good old algebra. So it's 2x equals 68. So what does x have to be? 34. Okay. The next one, we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Alternate interior angles are congruent. What did we say that alternate meant? Opposite. Opposite sides of the transversal. Interior angles. These are definitely between the two parallel lines, and they are on opposite sides of the transversal. So these are alternate interior. They are congruent. So, Edward, would you give me a, an equation that will help us figure out what x is? Uh-huh. Perfect. Okay. Okay. What's the next step, Jackson? 
Add 16, good. So 3x is now how much? Rex. 140. Okay, it may not come out evenly. We'll check. And so we divide by 3. And x will be, 3 goes into 12 four times. We'll have a 2 left over. 3 goes into 20 six times, right? 18, we'll have 2 thirds left over. Okay? And sometimes we won't get whole numbers. Most of the time we do. You could put a decimal, 46.6, .6, repeating. Okay? All right, next one. Two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Alternate exterior angles are congruent. So alternate, again, means opposite sides of a transversal, right? Exterior means on the outside of those parallel lines. So these two are congruent. Who can give me an equation that will tell me what the relationship is between those two? Good. Okay. Everyone see how Rex got that? Okay. So the next step. Pick on Bryce. What's the next step, Bryce? For this one. Good. So we're going to take the 4x to the other side. And we'll get x. Let's do this in the same step. What are we going to do to the 30, Jaden? Good. We'll add it to both sides. And we'll get 32. Okay. All right. Then here's the, the one that's different. Okay. So if consecutive interior angles are supplementary, what does consecutive mean? Same side. Interior means inside between. So if these two are going to be supplementary, what's my equation going to say? Yep, minus 9. Excellent. Good job, Trevor. Okay. So, Leah, what's the next step? Good. Adding the x's. Yep. So, we're combining the like terms, aren't we? 4 and a negative 9 is going to get us... That was a 9, sorry. 4, four plus a negative 9 is... Negative 5, right? Okay. And that's equal to 180. Next step. Yes. Add the 5. So 5x is now 185. And then a good mental math calculator or someone who with the calculator, what's it going to be? So 5 goes into 18 at least 3 times. 30... 39. Good. You were close. Okay. Everybody okay with these? Two parallel lines cut by a transversal makes corresponding angles congruent, alternate interior angles congruent, alternate exterior angles congruent, but consecutive interior, and I'm going to slip up and call them same side interior sometimes, they're going to be supplementary. Other books call them same side interior. Another name for consecutive interior. Okay, so in your notes, I want you to figure out, draw this quick sketch. It's on a separate sheet of paper. No room for them on your foldable. Draw this quick sketch. We've got two parallel lines that have arrows showing that they're parallel. These red arrows. P and Q are parallel. They're cut by transversal T. And we have 1, 2, 4, 75 degrees, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And we should be able to work our way all the way around and figure out all the angles. Just by one.
So draw that, please. Yes. Label it. Cameron, let's wake up and draw this, please, sir. All right, so Nikayla, where are we going to start? Can you see an angle that we can figure out from what we've got going on here? Two, good. How much is two going to be? And how do you know that? It's the same because they are vertical. Good. All right, so angle two equals 75. They're vertical angles. Okay, excellent. So don't forget about vertical angles. Vertical angles are your friends. They'll help you find these answers. Okay. All right, Mitch, where can we go from here? 180 minus 75. I like where you're going with that. So what's 180 minus 75? 105. Why is angle 1 105? kind of angles are they? They're supplementary because they are a linear pair, okay? So we've got linear pairs there. That's going to make that 105, okay? What else do we know? 4 has got to be 105 as well because 1 and 4 are vertical. Okay, so we've worked our way around that. Now, how do we get to the next part? Kind of. Same thing, just reverse, but we've got to get somewhere with these new theorems that we just learned. We've got some inside, some interior angles, right? Two and seven are two and eight are corresponding. Two and seven are alternate exterior. So angle two and angle seven are alternate exterior. So what should they be? Equal or supplementary? Equal. Okay. So the seven is going to be seventy five degrees. Okay. I'm sorry. Six, six will also be 75. Why? Vertical to 7. Excellent. What else? Mitch. Not Mitch. Uh, from Missouri. Miles. Which other one can we tell? Well, how, what can you get from here? All of them, right? Because 5 is going to be what? 105. Linear pair, right? But 5 is also corresponding to 1, isn't it? And so they should be equal. Okay, and then likewise, 5 and 8 are going to be the same again for vertical angles. For vertical angles are going to be our friends. Not too bad, right? You guys can do this. Okay. Value of x. How are we going to find x? 2x equals 120. What do you think? What kind of angles are these? How are they related? Same side or alternate or opposite sides? Opposite, so they're alternate. Inside or outside, or we don't know, do we? 
we have a special name for them? One's inside, one's outside. So they're not interior or exterior, are they? But 120 is this one, right? Because of vertical. Now what kind of angles are these? Same side, so consecutive interior. Okay, so now we've got some consecutive interior. What do you know about consecutive interior? On the same side, on the inside, are they congruent or are they supplementary? Supplementary. So what's an equation we're going to use? If they're supplementary, these two should add up to 180. So 2x plus 120 should equal 180. You could, you could. But it's better to write the equation, okay? So we've got this relationship. What's the next step, Katie? We have 2x plus 120 equals 180. What's the next one? Excellent. So 2x is now equal to 60. And what are we going to get, Nikayla? Yep. Okay. So we can do these, right? Got to focus, got to pay attention to our foldables. Here's our last one. How are we going to find y? Cameron, what are they? Same side or outside? Or opposite sides? Opposite sides, so alternate, right? Interior or exterior? Good. What are alternate exterior angles? What do we know about them? Are they congruent or are they supplementary? They're congruent. Look at your blue sheet if you're not sure. Are their alternate exterior are congruent? So, What's my equation going to say? Who haven't I picked on yet? I haven't picked on uh, not Milagros. So what's my equation going to say if these are congruent? Perfect. Okay. So what's the next step? Add three. Good. Now what? Twenty-two. Okay. Those are the kinds of problems you'll see today. Figuring out how they're related, whether the, and then the lines will be parallel. So set up the equations and work them out. All right. Assignment. Oh, forgot about one thing. The rise of the proofs. Okay. We do. And these proofs are going to be easier because you can work your way all the way around. You have vertical angles. You have linear pairs. You know this stuff. You can do this stuff. Okay? So here we go. P is parallel to Q. And we're to prove alternate interior angles without using the corresponding angles theorem. So we can't use corresponding. We're wanting to prove alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay? So these lines are parallel. So far, so good. What do we know? How can we talk about 1 or 2? What do we know about 1? And 4? Someone told me earlier. I think it was Mitch. What do we know about these two guys? Wasn't you? Maybe it was Jaden. Wasn't you? What do we know about these two? They, they are four. Uh, corresponding would be like four with this one or one with this one. But what? just ignoring the rest of this, what's happening with one and four? And not even our just old stuff. What are these guys? They share a... 
line, so they're a linear pair, okay? So let's say that angle 1 plus angle 4 have to add up to 180, right? Okay. Definition of, or actually linear pair, linear pairs are supplementary. Okay. By that same tone, what else should be adding up to 180? Two and three. Same reason, yep. So you can just put tick marks or you can rewrite it. Okay, those tick marks say ditto, do the same thing as above. L linear pairs are supplementary. Okay. We've got two things equal to 180, so what can we do? Combine them. So if they're both equal to 180, then these guys should be equal, right? Okay. So far, so good. What was the reason for that? What do you think? These are equal, so these are equal. We are starts with an S. <laughs> Sub, not subtraction, but substitution. It's been a while. Okay, so we're close. Now, we can't use corresponding angles, but we can use other ones. How are three and four related to each other? Alternate exterior angles, okay? What do we know about alternate exterior angles? Good. They're congruent. So we can say that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, right? Okay. Now, if we want, we can be very formal about this proof, and we can say that means that the measure of angle 3 plus equals the measure of angle 4 by definition of congruence. But again, I'm not going to hold you to this. Okay, so one plus, 1 plus 4 equals 2 plus 3. 3 equals 4. We're trying to get 4 congruent to 2, aren't we? So we've got to do something to get only 4s and 2s here. So is it okay to substitute a... Actually, we're trying to get 1 and 2, aren't we? Trying to get this equal to this. So what can we do? Substitute. We're going to say angle 1 plus angle 3 equals the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. And that was substitution again, wasn't it? And why did we do that? Because we want to be able to... to take away the angle 3 from both sides. So then angle 1 is equal to angle 2 by subtraction. Okay. All right. In class assignment, try to get as much of it done as possible. We're going to skip that one. All right. Lesson 3.2. Page 135, 1, 2 through 12 even, 
and 25 to 28. Homework is your notes. So we're going to try to get this done. We have about 10 minutes left. We can get through much of it in class. The notes are to add the next section's theorems to your notes. Same place. Um, you could if you want to. Same place as the, um, as the parallel and perpendicular theorem you put in yesterday or for yesterday. <laughs> 